Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna be planting this agave avatafolia. I got this uh, from Plant Delights Nursery. I did an unboxing uh, video from them, and I've done some ongoing videos with Tony Avent, and uh, one of them includes um, information about agaves if you wanna go back and uh, look at that video. I'm gonna plant this. Um, this is an unnamed um, agave avatafolia, so it was likely just done as from, from seed, and you get seedling variation in these, so e each of them would probably be slightly different that they were sending out, you know, uh, like this. And then they have named cultivars as well. I'm gonna put this on an area out here, right next to the curb where it slopes quite a bit. And I don't know if it'll pick up on the, um, on the video, but there's probably, you know, it gains about a foot of elevation right off, the, right out of the gate, um, of, fr from the curb going back. Kind of the perfect place uh, for this agave, it needs about eight hours of sun or more. Um, and uh, again, obviously well-drained soil. Uh, these are, uh, some people call them century plants or well's tongue um, uh, century plants because this one has the very wide, um, very wide leaves. These are in the asparagus family and you know why when they flower. You know, when that asparagus, when, when, the, when the flower start, starts to come up, it, it resembles asparagus, tons of things in that asparagus family. Uh, and a lot of them, look very different in their lifespan until the, you know, and then the flower spike comes up on them and you, and you know why. Um, they're in the asparagus family, but I'm going to, uh, uh, most of the landscape out here is kind of cultivated for um, preserving moisture in between rains and, uh, you know, kind of holding in water. And uh, I can't really do that with an agave even planted on a slope. So I'm gonna get this mulch pulled back. Uh, in this area, this thing will end up 36 inches wide, and so that's you know that's wider than uh, obviously um, I'm giving it here. But it's going to take a few years for it to really take a bunch of space over. So when that happens, um, I've got enough space here if I move a few perennials. So I'll, in the future, I'll move that cone flower that's there um, and any other perennial that's in the way. Uh, I'm going to get down to the bare you know, down to the bare ground here. And I'm gonna mix in a, a generous amount of this permatil. Uh, I'm just gonna break this up real quick before I, before I do that. Agaves have pretty shallow root systems, so it's not that necessary to break things up very deep, but I wanna get the ground underneath it. Um, very well drained. And so this is an expanded slate. Uh, this, this particular product's called Permatil and it's here in North Carolina, but I'm sure there's expanded slate products everywhere. Um, this stuff works fantastic for several things in the garden. Uh, if you have voles, a lot of people use this as a, a vole deterrent. Uh, for me, um, I always use it when I need things that are to be super well drained. I have a couple Daphne in the ground and uh, in my clay soils, Daphne can kind of struggle. So uh, if you go back and watch my Daphne planting videos, you'll see I used it then. And I'm gonna use a generous amount here. I really wanna have this be super well drained and I'm gonna mix that in. And then I'm ultimately still gonna plant the plant kind of high. As Tony said, agave grow quite a bit faster here in the east because it's not like they totally dislike water. These leaves are a storage system for water. And here in the east, we get, as long as the roots are well drained, um, when it does rain, they soak up lots of water. That's what they do. And uh, so that makes them grow faster here. And they get the name century plants because they're thought to bloom once every hundred years. But in, in the east, maybe every 10 or you know, t uh, it'll bloom sometime between 10 and 20 years. Uh, okay, I think that's enough there. And I'll add some more, a little more to it when I actually start the planting. Probably wanna wear gloves for this operation. It's a spiny beast. This one is really well established in this container. So, that'll work, this, work it out here. 
I mean, really well established in this container. But if I get up underneath it like this, I can get it out of there. Roots are pretty well matted in there, as you would expect. It's a big plant in a small, in a small container there. I'm going to break these up, get them headed outward. And look, they've got it in a, in a potting soil that stays very moist. So, you know, they're capable of taking a little more moisture than you think. When it's really problematic is in the winter time. And so in the winter, the water tends to build up in our soils and it doesn't drain at that time. Or it doesn't, it doesn't get used because the plant is in a dormant state. Um, so that's when we have to be concerned, you know, about the water. So I want to make sure, again, this slope will drain in the winter. This permatill will help with that. Okay, I've got the roots pretty well broken up there and I'm basically setting this thing on that top of that soil okay as you can see I didn't really bury it all that much and I'm going to add more permatill around it throwing some in the middle of it Also having it on this angle is really gonna show it off. I've angled it a bit to exaggerate that some, just so it can be seen. Okay, then I am gonna use a small amount of this mulch back over top of it, just a very thin coating, just to keep the space decorative. Just like that, not burying that too much at all. I see more and more people planting uh, agave uh, in the area um, and other succulents uh, on slopes and hard to grow uh, places. Uh, it has become more and more popular. You can go on the Plant Delights website and find the most cold hardy um, agave varieties that they offer. Um, uh, this one is hardy in zone seven to nine B. Uh, I think, again, it needs to be out here in the uh, full sun. These make great container plants. And again, you'd want a fairly well-drained uh, soil mix uh, to grow them in a container. And you're gonna lose at least one zone, possibly even two zones of cold hardiness. So they have to be probably treated as a house plant uh, in, you know, if you were in zone seven and you were growing one as a container, whereas I can leave it in the, gro in the ground, it's totally fine because the roots are, are insulated. But again, just see more and more of them. They're great plants. Another thing is some of them uh, produce, um, produce pups. And so when they flower, you know, another part of the plant can, you know, you can, you can harvest from some die um, after, after flowering, which is fine, you know, um, Again, it's going to be a long time before that happens, and the whole event would be exciting regardless of whether you lose the plant afterwards or not. It's just, you know, it's kind of, it's, it will be a fun event, you know, when that happens. This one's going to get big enough to fill this entire space, and, and a couple of things are going to have to move in the future. But I don't plan, I don't plant things in the landscape like that, because if I do, you know, it would just be such a boring spot for the next eight years waiting for this thing to fill in. So it's going to be... Uh, slightly crowded in the meantime, and I will make it less crowded as it needs more space uh, in the future. So first agave uh, in the landscape here in Raleigh Zone 7B. Thanks for watching.